ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the press conference for United Kingdom. My name is Katharina Rofstotter Janssen, and uh, hello to the viewers watching this online. So now please give Joe and Jake a warm hand. You're not alone, we're in this together. All that you want is right forever, and then I'll need to know. So hi guys. Hey, how are you? Hello. Great, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Well, you look like you had a great time on stage. Thank, thank, thank you very much, we did indeed. Tell us about the differences between the first rehearsal and this one. I knew the pyros were coming. <laughs> the pyros were prepared this time. I knew they were coming. No flames going up your legs. No, no taking off half an eyebrow or anything, I'm fine, you got away with it. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything you'd like to uh, work on further, or are you happy? Is this final version? Um, you know, it's, we, we're very happy with how the, uh, the rehearsals have been going. I mean, you know, we, we always find room to improve, you know, we're very hard working, so we're always picking out bits we want to change, and, but we're, we're very happy with the way it's been going, it's, it's exciting. Speaking of change, just so you know it, there will be no... Um, time for interviews right after this press conference because these guys need to change and spruce up a bit for the red carpet. Not that you need sprucing up, but anyway. <laughs> Thank you so very there will be no interviews in the press center right after. Okay. Got that right. Excellent. So, about the show. Um, movements, camera angles, you feel all comfortable? Um, well, we're certainly working on that. We're feeling pretty comfortable right now, but as we, as Joe was just saying, you know, we're, we're always looking to improve, always. It's a curse, really. <laughs> yeah, we're always looking to improve, but uh, I think we're pretty happy with how we are right now. Talking about improving stuff, uh, I interviewed some other guys, roughly your age, slightly older, the Danish trio, the other day, and they are working on improving stuff, uh, especially for children. They work on charity work. Are you familiar with their work? Have you spoken with them? No, we haven't. A little bit, yeah? No, we haven't. So how do you feel, I mean, being young men, or artists in, in general, you have a possibility of being role models. Do you feel that that's something that challenges you or inspires you, or how do you look at that? Uh, to be honest, yeah, I think, you know, if, if people can look at us as role models, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a lovely thing for us. And, you know, it, it's, you know, we're, we're two normal guys. We both, you know, we lived normal jobs. We did normal things. So. It's just a case of just following your dream. So, you know, if anyone spoke to me and asked me how, how we've both got to this situation, it's just hard work. And, you know, if you've got a dream, then you've just got to chase it. So if, if people see us as role models, that would be a very flattering thing and we'd be very, very grateful. Flattering. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's take some questions. In the middle here. Hello. Uh, Hello. Joe, Jake and Team BBC. Well done, everybody. Take Thank next you. week off, won't you? Be sure to take next week off. Uh, I'm John Jacob, thoroughly good. Uh, I've got a question for both of you. I have to be quite insistent about the answer. I asked Sweden's Franz earlier on, and he just sort of shrugged his shoulders and went... So, the question is, what one thing have you both learned about yourself doing Eurovision? Mm, that's a so, that, that is quite a good question, actually. This is a good question. I wish I would have said that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think if I've learned anything, it's it's you know how much that I want to be doing this for the rest of my life. You know, um, working with Jake's just been absolutely amazing. We've been working together for about twelve months now, and you know this is just a being in a composition this big is just a huge thing. So I think you know we want this to carry on forever. Do you know what I mean? This has been an incredible experience, and we don't want it to stop. Yeah, definitely. Um, as strong as a point as that is, um, I think it's adaptability really because you know there's many there's many parts of performing and things like that that were certainly both out of our out of both of our comfort zones when we started this whole process. And you know when we look at where we started and where we are now, there is a drastic difference. So I think it's we've both adapted a lot more than we ever thought that we could. And it's all, it's all because we've worked really hard, massively hard, to make sure that everything really changes. Thank you. More questions? Up front, please. All the way up front here. <coughs> Hello, my name is Kasper Veltener from Eurovision Arts in the Netherlands. And I have a question for Jake. Uh, you worked with uh, Will.i.am in The Voice UK. What is the best advice you gave to you? 
Best advice? Uh, it was actually, I mean, don't get me wrong, everything he says is very, very intriguing. Like, um, what he actually said was, for every door that closes, there's a key in the parking lot for a bulldozer to knock the house down. It's what he actually said. But I suppose, roughly translated, that means, you know, for every time you get a no, that's more fuel to just keep pushing forward and never take no for an answer and keep working hard. And I like to think that's, that's what we've both been doing for quite a while, ever since, you know, we've had a number of no's and until people can't help but say yes. <laughs> Thank you. More questions? Lady in the back, please. And then gentleman in the yellow. <coughs> Hi Joe, hi Jake. Hi. I'm Lisa Hello. at Eurovision Ireland, so your neighbours just across the Irish Sea. Um, my question is, I first met you in London at the London Eurovision party, uh, and you did um, Tel Aviv as well, and, and some of the, the pre-parties. How important have you found that for getting your song out there, and how did you realise how big the Eurovision fan community is? Has that been a surprise to you, or did you know us over here anyway? That was a great opportunity for Very us to important. perform there. Yeah, it was massively important because obviously we we've seen on social media how huge Eurovision is. We've been fans for years, but you know we hadn't yet tasted how how big it was and had a sort of feeling about it. So for us to go and perform that song and see the crowd, it was just amazing. The reaction we got was so lovely. So. I think that was a very, a very nice sort of step, to, you know, to prepare us to be here in Stockholm for the final. I think it was really important as well to go to other countries and just to see how massive Eurovision is, you know, within their cultures, and that that was certainly a massive eye opener as to how huge it was for everybody. It's amazing. And, uh, it was, you know, that's when we really gauged how big this com the competition is, and you know, thank God we went to those countries because we thoroughly enjoyed them. Great. Another question. There was the gentleman in the yellow first. And then... Hi, I'm Daniel, a Swedish Eurovision fan. And my question is, uh, do you have any favourites among the other artists on this competition? It's a difficult question, isn't it? Yeah, there's, a, mean, there's a lot of great songs this year. Very, a lot. very strong songs. It's, um, it's, a, it's going to be a difficult, difficult one. I mean, we've got a couple that we think mm. are... Uh, you know, great songs and songs that we love ourselves, haven't we? I mean, I think, so far, We'd have to go with France and Sweden. Now, I love that. I love Franz's song and Amir's song is very strong. They're very strong. I think they're quite they're, they're sort of sort of songs that we'd like to do ourselves. So I think you know we we both agreed on on those two. Have you been able to hang out with France? Yes, we have. Yeah, yes, we have, we've yeah. been in the London. Party, uh, when we? he came to London, we had we had a really good laugh with him, and we got to chat to him a little bit earlier, and we're going to catch up with him later. Oh, he's a cool dude, huh? He very is, nice yeah, guy. He's a young cool dude. He's yeah, cool, yeah. Sometimes you forget how young he is. He's, <laughs> he's from Scone, in my my part of the woods, yeah, all the way in the south. Really nice, nice. Uh, let's see, you were first, and then the lady in pink. <laughs> Hello, John Jake, Team UK. Hello. JP from Radio International. That is now a question to the BBC. The national finalist was fantastic when we watched it on uh, online. Are you planning to do the same next year? Because it's been a real success. Good music came out of it, so hopefully you're going to continue the same way. Helen, do you want to? Um, well, we were, we were very pleased. The public was incredibly supportive. This year, um, we've definitely put so much effort into having the biggest song search ever. Uh, we have a music consultant, Hugh Goldsmith, who was involved with Innocent Records, Innocent Label, and uh, had the likes of Blue and Atomic Kitten. So he had great contacts, uh, contacts and people to speak to, uh, so songwriters to get them actually interested. We also had Basker involved, uh, and then also the public selection process. So again, we just wanted to make it as big and all-encompassing as possible. Um, it seems to have gone down very well. We're incredibly pleased with who the public picked. Uh, I don't think they could have done a better job, so that's great. And yeah, I, I think we'll we'll keep going. We're, we're incredibly keen to uh, get the support of the music, the British music industry. We're keen to um, to show how serious we take the competition and how much we want to to do well. Thank you, lady up here, pink. Microphone, please. Hello guys, uh, Hello. my name is Rumi from MMTV Bulgaria. That's me. Um, 
Um, I'd like just to say, uh, despite the half empty press room, um, you are not alone. <laughs> you are nice. We, we like you and we keep you know, our fingers crossed for you. Um, oh, thank you. My question is, as I do live in London for 15 years now, so um, I know the attitude towards your vision in the United Kingdom and usually the pressure is huge. Uh, whoever represents United Kingdom here and uh, you know the the syndrome of uh, zero points so no uh, you know uh, it's for you make it or break it so how do you deal with the pressure that everyone expecting you to do this year really well I think, I'm sorry yeah, you go you go thank you <laughs> I think you know we just try our best to not even think about that at all and just focus on you know, doing what we do best really and that's just like zoning out, enjoying the performance as much as possible and just you know, having a big smile on our faces and hopefully putting a big smile on everybody else's and I think our song and our performance can really do that. So uh, we're just going to do our very best, enjoy ourselves and hope that it's, uh, it's more than enough. Great answer, huh? More questions? I'd like to ask you guys Considering the football, sorry, the soccer situation, well, it depends no, on it's the part, part of, Don't you know, worry. Part of where, you, where your English is from. Um, in Liverpool, mm -hmm. where is sort of the media focus now? Is it on football or is it, or is it on you? To be honest, I think it's probably more about football at the moment, isn't it, with the Premier League? Because it's a big thing that's happening with Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on. And, I mean, you know, we've... Well, they're in, the, they're in the final of the Europa League on the 18th of May, so... There's a I lot of Liverpool's press. pretty buzzing football-wise right now. But, you know, I mean, it'd be nice to get them singing You're Not Alone, wouldn't it, if we, if we win now? That'd be great. That would be a well, very good... Uh, you're Not Alone, You'll Never Walk Alone. You've played that already, I guess. Yeah, 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 we'll yeah, sort yeah. something out, I'm sure. We won't, because I'm an Everton fan. <laughs> He's not with us. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right. I'm sure you'll sell that, whatever. Whenever it happens, great. Oh, question in the back, please. Oh, let's uh, have oh, here we go. Right now. <laughs> oh, there's a bigger Did you go to the show with this um, Guys, good to see you again. I've actually just flown in from probably the biggest party um, anywhere in England soon for several years. I can imagine. Um, a lot of people are saying there's a lot of pressure on you, but um, speaking from experience, sometimes the underdog can come through and win everything. Um, have you actually thought about what winning Eurovision would mean to you? Of course, I mean we've obviously thought about how it feels to win and I mean, me and Jake are very competitive people but um, you know we at the end of the day we're just so focused on getting our performance you know to the best it can possibly be you know whether we win or, or you know it doesn't matter where we come at the end of the day as long as we can leave that stage knowing that we've done the best we can to perform to that the maximum ability that we've got I think we'll leave the stage very happy. Thank you. Another question? In the middle here, please. Hi, Ben Manister from the UK Fan Club, OJ UK. Hello. Well, well done on a fantastic rehearsal. Thank you. Um, following up JP's question, obviously this was the first time for a number of years there's been a national final. Um, how important is it for you that your song was selected by the public, with that extra backing from very, the public? Very, very yeah. important. You know. Um, you know, straight away going into a competition as big as this, to know you've got the backing of your nation is a, is a great feeling, straight away. So I think it was really important that we had a national selection showing that our song was picked because, like I said, it's, it's, it's a big thing. It's a very big thing. So um, we're absolutely honoured that our nation has put us in this position. Thank you. Another question? I'd like to ask you guys, when you were up on stage, do you sing to anybody special or is it just like up to all of the audience? Or is there somebody in your mind or in your heart that you actually sing for? Usually a little red light just above the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Follow by Joe. You know, we follow back I, think, I think with the song and because the situation that we're doing it, I think me and Jake, you know, we're 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 two best mates just singing it and having fun. So you know, it, it can vary depending on how you're feeling, you know, it is... Whether he's liking me on that day or not. Yeah, <laughs> it, it could be about anyone, you know, it could be about family, it could be about your friends, it could be about any situation you want it to be, but, you know, because we're singing it representing the UK, me and Jake, two best mates on stage, we just like to have fun with it, and, you know, we, we sort of, we just, just completely zone out, we don't think about anything else and just perform. Great. Nice. Well, good luck to these best mates, right? <laughs> Thank you. And there's a photo opportunity against the photo wall, and then you're off to uh, get ready for the red carpet. Yes, so see you then. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. Just best of luck. Thank you.